So in this video, we are going to learn how we can differentiate the various trigonometric functions. That is the sine, cos, and then the tangent. So we are having the cos s equals s, sine s, and then tan s. Using the first principles. So let's take the cos. So you know that from the first principle is defined by the limit as h approaches 0 of s plus h minus f of x all over h. So whenever you are solving or differentiating an equation and then you use this method and it's called the first principle or you are in other words you are using the first principle to differentiate that particular equation. So let's take the cos s. So f of x is equal to cos s. So in this case, wherever we see x, we just replace it by s plus h. So the limit of f of x is equal to limit as h approaches 0 of cos we have an x here so s plus h s plus h minus f of x f of x is the whole distance so cos s all over h we are having this and then we having some uh, trigonometric identities for cos which says that cos a minus cos b equal to minus 2 sine a plus b over 2 sine a minus b over 2 so this is the identity for cos a minus cos b so you fix whatever is here to this part but in this case, our a is equal to s plus h, and then our b is equal to x. So, we have something like the limit as h approaches 0 of the whole of this thing. Because this thing now, you will fix this thing over here, and then we replace a and b by this and this. So, we get minus 2 sine our a is s plus h plus x all over 2 sine our a is s plus h minus our b x all over 2 this whole thing over h so let's take what is at the top and then solve it so we get negative 2 sine 2x plus h all over 2 sine h over 2 and then with this one we can write this as minus 2 sine 2x over 2 plus h over 2 sine h over 2 so we now get minus 2 sine x over 2 sorry at this cancel this we have x plus h over 2 sine h over 2 so we are now having this this thing we just fix this one over here so we get Element as h approaches zero of minus two sine x plus h over two sine h over two all over h. So we can write this as limit as h approaches zero of sine negative sign 
s plus h over 2 sine h over 2 all over h all over 2. Why am I saying this? When having something like 2b over c, you can write this as b over c over 2. Because the reciprocal of this will give us 2b over c. Which is equal to this one. So that is what is happening over here. So we are having this. We can write this also as limit as h approaches 0 of minus sine x plus h over 2 times limit as h approaches 0 of sine h over 2 all over h over 2. And then there is one property of limit, which is limit as s approaches 0 of sine x over x is equal to 1. So that is what is also happening over here. We can see that sine h, sine h over 2 over h over 2 will give us 1. This whole thing is equal to 1. So we get limit as h approaches 0 of minus sine s plus h over 2. So here we fix in our zeros, we get minus sine x plus 0 over 2, which we get minus sine x. So let's take sine x. So f of x is equal to sine x. And then again, the first principle is defined by derivative of f of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So wherever we see our x, we replace it by s plus h. So we get limit as h approaches 0 of sine s plus s plus h minus f of x which is sine x all over h so there is also some identity for sine which states that sine a minus sine b is equal to 2 cos a plus b all over 2 sine a minus b all over 2. So with this one, our a is equal to s plus h, b is equal to x. So let's fix it in. So we get 2 cos s plus h plus x over 2. And then we have sine s plus h minus x all over 2. So we get 2 cos s plus h over 2 sine h over 2 so what we have gotten over here is for the numerator so we fix it over here so we get limit as h approaches 0 of 2 cos s plus h over 2 sine h over 2 all over h 
And then we can write this one as name it as h is equal to zero, h applicative zero, sorry, of cos s plus h over two sine h over two all over h over two. And then we can write this as limit as h approaches zero of cos s plus h over two times limit as h approaches zero of sine h over two over h over two. So this will give us one. So we get limit as h approaches zero of cos s plus h over two and then we fix in our zeros so we get cos s plus zero over two and then we get cos s plus zero which is cos s that is absolute the derivative of sine x So finally, let us consider f of x is equal to tan x. So the first principle is defined by the derivative of f of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f into s plus h minus f of x all over h. So wherever we see x, then we place it by s plus h. So we get limit as h approaches 0 of tan s plus h minus tan x all over h and then we have a property for an identity for tan this is tan x plus h is equal to tan x plus tan h all over 1 minus tan x tan h so we fix this one here so we get limit as h approaches 0 of this one here so we get tan x plus tan h all over 1 minus tan x tan h minus tan x all over h so now let us consider what is at the top and then solve that one so tan x plus tan h all over 1 minus tan x tan h minus tan x so you find the LCM for this. So you get the LCM for this is 1 minus tan x tan h. And then 1 minus tan x tan h goes here 1. Multiply this, you get tan x plus tan h. So this one is over 1. So this one, 1 will go into this one. 1 minus tan x tan h. So you get minus tan x into 1 minus tan x tan h so you, you multiply 2 by minus tan x so you get tan x plus tan h minus tan x plus tan square x tan h all over 1 minus tan x tan h and then you can see that minus tan x can cancel tan x so this and this will go off leaving tan h plus tan, tan square x tan h all over 1 minus 
than x than h. So this is what we are having for the numerator. So we fix this one right here. So we get limit as h approaches zero of tan h plus tan square x tan h all over 1 minus tan x tan h. So we can write this as limit as h approaches zero of tan h plus tan square x tan h all over h into 1 minus tan x tan h because I found the reciprocal of this and then I had I had this so we have limit as h approaches zero we can factorize tan h tan h out so we have tan h into 1 plus tan square x all over h into 1 minus tan x tan h so now we can also write this as limit as h approaches zero of tan h over h times limit as h approaches zero of one plus tan square x over one minus tan x tan h so tan h over tan h this one we can do it as same as what we had at the first one so it was one times limit as h approaches zero of one plus tan square x all over one minus tan x tan h So we're fixing our zeros, we have, so this one multiply this, we get the same as this one. So we get 1 plus tan square x over 1 minus tan x into tan 0. And then this multiply this whole thing, tan, tan 0 is 0 times this one is 0. So we get 1 plus tan square x over 1 is equal to 1 plus tan square x but we know that um, 1 plus tan square x is equal to sec square x so when we combine the two we have 1 times sec square x which will give us sec square x 